I don't play the Beast Quest. Series one, book two. Serpent the Sea Serpent. Prologue. The fishing boat rocked gently on the waves. Colum loosened the rope and let down the sail. His father began to cast out the net, sing softly through his teeth as he worked. I don't know why we, we bought the grumbled. You haven't caught anything for a month. You know what they say? Colin said, The sea serpent has cleared away the fish. His father snorted. Old wives' tales. Anyway, I thought that sea serpent was meant to help us. Colin glanced round, shivering slightly. Nothing broke the surface of the sea, except for a small rocky island not far from the beach. In the hall, nothing in the net. There is nothing in it. Useless, his father said. Cast out the net again. As Colin watched it sink into the depths of the water, he spotted something happening between the boat and the shore. It looked as if the sea was boiling. Then it began to churn angrily, foam, and waves dashed, eh? Against the rocks. Look, he cried, pointing, pointing over there. His father turned, grabbing the side of the boat. He started to rock dangerously. Then out of the water rose a monstrous head. A long slender neck was covered in thick rainbow-colored scales and barnacles. A golden color around the beast's neck in the sunshine and a glowing chin stretched from the stone into the water. What is it? Colum spouted and yelled. Colum scrambled for the rope to raise the sail, but it was too late. The beast's neck arched and its vast head loomed over the boat. Colum stared up into the huge ferocious eyes that seemed to burn with coal fire. Took him with terror, he saw the creature's jaws gape open. Its long, curving fangs snapped the boat's mast, and splinters sh showered down on father and sound like rain. Seawater slopped over Colum as the boat tilted. Cowering down, he wrapped his arms over his head and squeezed his eyes shut as the roar of the sea serpent echoed. Chapter 1. The Road to the West. Tom brought Storm to a halt at the foot of a rocky, rocky slope. He and Alina slipped to the ground so that the horse, horse could rest. Silver the wolf flopped down beside them, his tongue lolling out as they panted. The hill where Tom had met at her, the fire dragon, Bruno, was far behind them. Now he and Alina were heading west on the next day of the beast quest. Tom's heart began thumping as he remembered how he had freed Verna from the curse of the Mavel, the dog wizard. The dragon had burnt crops all over Avatia and blocked the river, making land dry and barren. When Tom had unlocked the match collar that imprisoned him, the dragon was released from the spell. As he flew, it just collapsed, dislodged the stones damming the river, and a foaming torrent had gushed down the side. Never forget how Myrna broke the rocks with his tail, Alina said, as if she guessed what Tom was thinking. Radio right, leapt up on his wing. That was really brave. Who had, wouldn't have worked if you hadn't shot that arrow what? up to me? The key tied to it, Tom replied, feeling embarrassed by Alina's praise. I never have a long to call it without that. What you did was just still the bravest thing I ever seen, Alina insisted. We both breed, Bruno, Tom said firmly. Now Aventia has water again. Yes, and no more bound crops, Alina agreed. Silva so leapt up again with an impatient yelp. Alina turned to Tom. 
A determined look in her eyes. I better push her on, he said. Tom could still hear the words of Wizard Admiral raising in his ears. Freeing Verno the Fire Dragon was only the first of his tasks. Marvel's curse had turned the good beasts of Aventia to evil monsters that were destroying the kingdom. It was Tom's quest to free all the beasts and save his people. Tom wasn't sure he could succeed. There was so much he had to do and so many beasts to conquer. But he met to try with all the strength and courage he had. While there's blood in my veins, he thought, I will not give up. This was the adventure Tom had been waiting for all his life. And even though his father, Calder, and disappeared when Tom was a baby, he was determined to make him proud. Let's have another look at the map. He pulled out the scroll that Wizard Adru had given him. On a on it, a path called green, winding through the hills, and will land until it reached the sea in the west. As Tom looked at the map, a tiny head reared out of the woods, drawn on the paper just beside a spike of rock that looked like an island. Jagged tails flapped down, sending husband into the air. Tom started as the drops splashed onto his hand. There's serpent said Alina. Her voice was filled with awe. Can't believe it, said Tom. A sea serpent. He's angry. Alina's eyes were wide, as if she had just realized a huge mission facing them. How old do you think he's going to is just growing out in here? I don't know, Tom said. Then he added boldly, but whatever he's doing, we're going to stop it. That's part of our quest. So we'll let out another loud yelp. He grabbed the corner of Alina's cloak in his teeth and tucked in. He put up the slope. Storm scraped one hoof impatiently on the stove. Tom laughed. All right, I know. It's time we're going. He took the map one last time and stowed it away in his pocket. For scrambling back on the storm, he turned that the shield wizard Adra had given him a swing was strapped to his back. It had been scorched by Inferno, but one of the dragon's blue spark scales shone in the slot on the shield's surface. Was it true, Tom wondered, that the shield could not protect them from fire? He swung himself onto the saddle. Alina sprang up behind him and wrapped her arms around him and wrapped Round his waist. Tom patted Storm's glassy black neck. On to the west. At first, the path zigzagged up the slope, then through a bit belt of trees. By the time the sun went down, they reached a pass that curved through a range of low hills. Tom stopped beside a pool and slid to the ground. This will be a good place to make camp. Lena helped him to unsaddle store so the horse could grin, drink from the pool. So was stood beside him, lapping his Tom scooped a handful of water onto his mouth and started to collect sticks for a fire. I'm starving, said Alina. I'll see if there's there are any nuts or berries on these bushes. While she was searching, Tom cropped the grass beside the path. We have nothing for silver to eat, said Tom. He'll find something for himself, Alina replied. Go on, boy, patted the wolf and shooed him away. Silver wet, waved his tail and vanished among the rocks. He turned before Tom and Alina had finished eating, and they settled down for the night. Tom looked up at the stars, thinking about Serpent. He hoped they could reach the coast soon before the beasts had the chance to harm the kingdom much further. They set off again early the next morning and soon reached the edge of the hills. A long, smooth slope was in front of them. Far ahead, Tom could make out the distant glimmer of the sea and a tiny rocky island. We're almost there, Alina exclaimed. A flash of light underwater caught Tom's eye. He gasped. 
What's the matter? Alina asked. I'm not sure, but I think I saw a serpent. I felt Alina grip on it and tighten him. Where? It's there near that island, Tom pointed. But it's gone now. He dug his heels into Storm's side to urge him on. Soon the path leveled and they rode through farmland. Everything seemed deserted. Gray patches of ground were covered in burnt stubble. Look, Alina pointed to blackened timbers of what had been a far- farmhouse. Bruno was there. A shiver ran down Tom. He felt though he knew the dragon was now free from Marvel's evil spell and would never blast the land with fire again. He urged Storm to a faster trot, eager to keep moving. Silver bounded a few paces ahead. Some storm reared. His four legs pawed at the air. Elena squealed in alarm and gripped Tom to stop herself, sliding off. Storm! Steady! Tom yelled. When the horse's four legs fell to the ground, began skittering to one side. Tom tugged on the reins but couldn't get him under control. Then he noticed that Silver was standing still. His legs stiffed. The bushy gray fur on his shoulder was bristling. He began whining uneasily. Something's wrong, said Alina. Silver always knows. Tom glanced back at Alina, noticing the alarm in her eyes. Looked round, but saw nothing. Just empty fields. There was no sign of danger. But Silver was still whimpering, and Tom was still tossing his head. So he was rolling in panic. Beads of sweat had broken down on his black coat. What is it, boy? Tom was still struggling to keep the terrified horse on the path. What's the matter? Silver let out a howl, staring straight ahead. Following his gaze, Tom thought he could see him make out something moving on the horizon. A silver line had appeared, stretching as far as he could see both directions. Something glittered on it, and Tom see watery swells and peaks, which quickly grew bigger and bigger. Tom and Alina's were sound as she could hardly speak for fear. It's a tidal wave.